Section two of the Letters of Jane Austen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Elizabeth Clatt. Letter four. Rowling, Thursday, September fifteenth. My dear Cassandra, we have been very gay since I wrote last, dining at Nackington, returning by moonlight, and everything quite in style not to mention Mr. Claringbould's funeral which we saw go by on Sunday. I believe I told you in a former letter that Edward had some idea of taking the name of Claringbould. But that scheme is over. Though it would be a very eligible as well as a very pleasant plan, would any one advance him money enough to begin on? We rather expected Mr. Miles to have done so on Tuesday. But to our great surprise nothing was said on the subject and unless it is in your power to assist your brother with five or six hundred pounds, he must entirely give up the idea. At Nackington we met Lady Son's picture over the mantelpiece in the dining-room, and the pictures of her three children in an ante-room, besides Mr. Scott, Miss Fletcher, Mr. Toke, Mr. J. Toke, and the Archdeacon Lynch. Miss Fletcher and I were very thick, but I am the thinnest of the two. She wore her purple muslin, which is pretty enough, though it does not become her complexion. There are two traits in her character which are pleasing. Namely, she admires Camilla, and drinks no cream in her tea. If you should ever see Lucy, you may tell her that I scolded Miss Fletcher for her negligence in writing, as she desired me to do, but without being able to bring her to any proper sense of shame. That Miss Fletcher says, in her defence, that as everybody whom Lucy knew when she was in Canterbury has now left it, she has nothing at all to write to her about. By everybody I suppose Miss Fletcher means that a new set of officers have arrived there. But this is a note of my own. Mrs. Miles, Mr. John Toke, and in short everybody of any sensibility inquired in tender strains after you, and I took an opportunity of assuring Mr. J. T. that neither he nor his father need longer keep themselves single for you. We went in our two carriages to Nackington, but how divided I shall leave to you to surmise, merely observing that as Elizabeth and I were without either hat or bonnet, it would not have been very convenient for us to go in the chaise. We went by Bifrons, and I contemplated with a melancholy pleasure the abode of him on whom I once fondly doted. We dined to-day at Goodneston, to meet my aunt Fielding from Margate, and a Mr. Clayton, her professed admirer. At least, so I imagine. Lady Bridges has received very good accounts of Marianne, who is already certainly the better for her bathing. So His Royal Highness Sir Thomas Williams has at length sailed, the papers say, on a cruise but I hope they are gone to Cork, or I shall have written in vain. Give my love to Jane, as she arrived at Steventon yesterday, I dare say. I sent a message to Mr. Digweed from Edward, in a letter to Mary Lloyd, which she ought to receive to-day. But as I know that the Harwoods are not very exact as to their letters, I may as well repeat it to you. Mr. Digweed is to be informed that illness has prevented Seward's coming over to look at the repairs intended at the farm but that he will come as soon as he can. Mr. Digweed may also be informed, if you think proper, that Mr. and Mrs. Miles are to dine here to-morrow, and that Mrs. Joan Natchpool is to be asked to meet them. Mr. Richard Harvey's match is put off till he has got a better Christian name, of which he has great hopes. Mr. Children's two sons are both going to be married, John and George. They are to have one wife between them, a Miss Holwell, who belongs to the Black Hole at Calcutta. I depend on hearing from James very soon. He promised me an account of the ball, and by this time he must have collected his ideas enough after the fatigue of dancing to give me one. Edward and Fly went out yesterday very early, in a couple of shooting-jackets, and came home like a couple of bad shots, for they killed nothing at all. They are out again to-day, and are not yet returned. Delightful sport! They are just come home, Edward with his two brace, Frank with his two and a half. What amiable young men! Friday Your letter and one from Henry are just come, and the contents of both accord with my scheme more than I had dared expect. In one particular I could wish it otherwise, 
for Henry is very indifferent indeed. You must not expect us quite so early, however, as Wednesday the twentieth. On that day sunnight, according to our present plan, we may be with you. Frank had never any idea of going away before Monday the twenty-sixth. I shall write to Miss Mason immediately, and press her returning with us, which Henry thinks very likely, and particularly eligible. Buy Mary Harrison's gown by all means. You shall have mine for ever so much money. Though if I am tolerably rich when I get home, I shall like it very much myself. As to the mode of our travelling to town, I want to go in a stage-coach, but Frank will not let me. As you are likely to have the Williams and Lloyds with you next week, you would hardly find room for us then. If any one wants anything in town, they must send their commissions to Frank, as I shall merely pass through it. The tallow chandler is Penlington, at the Crown and Beehive, Charles Street, Covent Garden. Letter five. Rowling, Sunday, September 18th. My dear Cassandra, this morning has been spent in doubt and deliberation, in forming plans and removing difficulties, for it ushered in the day with an event which I had not intended should take place so soon by a week. Frank has received his appointment on board the Captain John Gore, commanded by the Triton, and will therefore be obliged to be in town on Wednesday. And though I have every disposition in the world to accompany him on that day, I cannot go, on the uncertainty of the Pearsons being at home, as I should not have a place to go to in case they were from home. I wrote to Miss P. on Friday, and hoped to receive an answer from her this morning, which would have rendered everything smooth and easy, and would have enabled us to leave this place to-morrow, as Frank, on first receiving his appointment, intended to do. He remains till Wednesday merely to accommodate me. I have written to her again to-day, and desired her to answer it by return of post. On Tuesday, therefore, I shall positively know whether they can receive me on Wednesday. If they cannot, Edward has been so good as to promise to take me to Greenwich on the Monday following, which was the day before fixed on, if that suits them better. If I have no answer at all on Tuesday, I must suppose Mary is not at home and must wait till I do hear, as after having invited her to go to Steventon with me, it will not quite do to go home and say no more about it. My father will be so good as to fetch home his prodigal daughter from town, I hope, unless he wishes me to walk the hospitals, enter at the temple, or mount guard at St. James's. It will hardly be in Frank's power to take me home. Nay, it certainly will not. I shall write again as soon as I get to Greenwich." What dreadful hot weather we have! It keeps one in a continual state of inelegance. If Miss Pearson should return with me, pray be careful not to expect too much beauty. I will not pretend to say that on a first view she quite answered the opinion I had formed of her. My mother, I am sure, will be disappointed if she does not take great care. From what I remember of her picture, it is no great resemblance. I am very glad that the idea of returning with Frank occurred to me for as to Henry's coming into Kent again, the time of its taking place is so very uncertain that I should be waiting for dead men's shoes. I had once determined to go with Frank to-morrow and take my chance, etc., but they dissuaded me from so rash a step, as I really think on consideration it would have been. For if the Pearsons were not at home, I should inevitably fall a sacrifice to the arts of some fat woman who would make me drunk with small beer. Mary is brought to bed of a boy, both doing very well. I shall leave you to guess what, Mary, I mean. Adieu, with best love to all your agreeable inmates. Don't let the Lloyds go on any account before I return, unless Miss P. is of the party. How ill I have written! I begin to hate myself. Yours ever, J. Austin. The Triton is a new thirty-two frigate, just launched at Deptford. Frank is much pleased with the prospect of having Captain Gore under his command. End of section two.